Okay, today we are talking about draft picks and trading them. Who gets draft picks? How do draft picks work? How are they divvied up? Well, every year, every team gets two draft picks. You get a first round draft pick and you also get a second round draft pick. How do you know where you rank? Is it like a snake draft type thing? It is not. The worse your team is, the better your draft pick will be. There's a lottery system. I actually have a video on the lottery system if you wanna see that. But more or less, the worst teams get the better picks. The good teams get worse picks. That's just the way it is. They wanna keep the teams in the league and all of it fair. They want parity in the league, so that's why they do that. So the second round is actually directly correlated with your record, okay? So the worst team in the league is going to get the first pick of the second round. The best team in the league is going to get the 30th pick of the second round. So that's how it works. Why would you trade picks and players? Why would a team trade a pick for a player? Why would you take a guy that's never been in the league, never played professional basketball potentially, and trade him for a player that has some experience and has been in the league for a while? Well, you can do that and you you're gonna wanna do that because rookies are on cheap contracts. That's how it works. Their contracts aren't as much as other players and they have more potential. So you have a guy on a cheap contract for four years. It's not necessarily cheap, but it's cheaper than most free agents that are good. And the player is on your team. He is already on your team, meaning you can offer him the best deal. If you haven't already watched a lot of my other videos, that is a very important part of the CBA and the way the NBA works. Resigning with your own team is is encouraged. Your own team in some capacity can always offer you the best deal. So it makes sense for you to stay on your current team. And honestly, that's why you see a lot of guys demanding trades. They sign really great deals with their current teams and then they wanna to go to a different team. So that's why you're seeing that a lot. That's why you're seeing these big trade demands because they sign a really great deal with their team and then they say, I don't actually wanna play here, I wanna be traded. I'm not disparaging those guys. Finesse the system, get your money, who cares? I don't care, I'm not salty about it. I make, you know, under, I'm not gonna tell you how much I make. Let's talk about the Rudy Gobert trade, okay? So the Timberwolves said, we wanna be good. We don't care about our draft picks. The next four years, we wanna be great. We wanna be a good team. We want our draft picks to not matter. We want our team to be so good that the draft picks are low. So they traded away four first round picks and a pick swap, which we're gonna get to, for Rudy Gobert, who is on a four year contract, okay? So they're like, we wanna add him to our team. We want a center that can block shots and get rebounds. It's very important to us and we don't wanna plan on the future. We already have enough good guys. We want this to be the core of our team. The Jazz said, we're bad. We wanna blow it up. We've been decent for a long time and it's not working for us. So take Rudy Gobert. We have no use for him because we want to be bad. We want to tank. We want to build up our roster and we're not going to try to win this year. So give us all your picks. They want all these first round picks that are gonna turn into guys coming out of college or from the G League, G the G League Ignite that are going to be cheap contracts for them to build around and end up being good players that they can resign or maybe trade for other players. You know, assets, future assets, potential to be good, if you will. The Jazz said, we want to, the potential to be good in the future. The Timberwolves said, we want to be good in the next four years. So it made sense. So Rudy Gobert went to the Timberwolves and what did the Jazz get? The Jazz got four first round picks, a pick swap. And I thought this was interesting. They said five players. They got five players because they had to have the salaries match. So the Jazz got back a bunch of players that the Minnesota Timberwolves didn't want. I think Jarrett Culver, Pat Beverly's in there. I'm not saying those guys are bad, but I think they were just salary filler because you need to take Rudy Gobert's salary and you need to match it to some degree. What they really wanted were those picks, those four first round picks in the pick swap. That was what the trade was actually for. So what is a protected pick? A protected pick is when you trade away your pick, but if it ends up being in the top 10, top four, you can put a protection on whatever type of protection you want. You say, if it ends up being really high, then we want the we want the pick back. You don't actually get it. So what happens? Is the other team just out of luck? Do they just not get the pick? No, it goes to the following year. But if you've already traded away your pick for that following year, then it becomes unprotected. So it just keeps going. You keep pushing the pick off until you run into a year where you've already traded away your pick and now it's unprotected. So eventually the team gets its pick. And an unprotected pick is, theirs. You just gave it to them. There's no sort of contingencies or anything. Whatever comes around that year, that is their pick. You gave away an unprotected pick, which are the big ones, right? Because if it's a protected pick, you kind of have the ability to evaluate, okay, there's a really good draft here. So, you know, if it ends up being in the top four, there's four really great rookies that year, we want it. If it ends up being five, they can take it. Because the fifth guy, the fifth guy on the uh, rookie chart, you can have him. We don't really want him. Like, uh, you know, a Victor 
Bendenyama, I don't know what his name is, but he's such a great pick. A lot of the teams gave away their pick, but they gave away a protection on the pick in the event that they end up getting the first pick. They want to be able to select Victor Bendenyama. I don't know his name, the French guy that's like seven foot nine or something like that. So what is a pick swap? Let's take the Jazz and the Timberwolves. In 2026, the Jazz have the ability to take the Wolves pick and give them their pick if the Wolves pick ends up being higher. So it's pretty cool. You're not actually trading away your pick, but you're saying you can have the better one. Let's say their pick is like three. Let's say the Wolves end up having pick three and the Jazz end up having pick 26. That is a lot of value right there. If you're getting the third pick versus the 26th pick, that's insane. You might as well have just given them the pick unprotected. So pick swaps are very important. Just gives you the ability to swap picks if their pick is higher. Also, another rule I want to bring up is the Stepien rule, meaning you cannot trade picks further than seven years in the future. You can't just say, you know what, we're going to give you our next 50 first round picks for LeBron. LeBron James, in theory. Uh, basically, there was a guy named Ted Stepien who sabotaged the Cavs. I think it was in the 70s. I have a video on this. But in the 70s, he basically sabotaged the Cavs, giving away all their future draft picks. So the NBA had to make a rule that no one could be that bad at being a GM. So they had to cover their asses in that way. And also, you cannot trade two first round picks in consecutive years. You have to keep one of them. That's a rule. But I think there are some workarounds around that, but I didn't look into it. All right, let's get into a couple trades. Anthony Davis, right? So Anthony Davis got traded to the Lakers. And what was the haul back that the Pelicans got? Well, they got Brandon Ingram, great player, Lonzo Ball, pretty good, injured a lot. Josh Hart, also pretty good. And they got three first round picks and an unprotected first round pick swap. That's solid. That's a solid haul. Some of those players ended up being DeAndre Hunter from 2022. That was the actual summer that Anthony Davis went to the Lakers. DeAndre Hunter ended up on the Hawks. Pelicans did some magic and traded him and whatever. He's not a Pelican, but they probably got some assets back. What assets? I don't know. And then they also got Dyson Daniels. That's from this year's draft. Dyson Daniels. Is he going to be good? I don't know. But that was the eighth pick. That was the eighth pick this year. Overall, I think Lakers won and I think the Pelicans won because Anthony Davis didn't want to be a Pelican. He was not going to be valuable to that team. And the Lakers won a championship. Have the Lakers been good as of late? No, but they did win a championship. So regardless, they could win zero games next year. I still think it's a win because they did win a championship. And that's ultimately what you want. Rather win one championship and be abysmal than be pretty good and never win a championship. That's my thought. So both teams won. All right, let's Let's talk about the 2013 Kevin Garnett Paul Pierce trade to the Nets okay so the Nets got Garnett Pierce Jason Terry and DJ White okay what did the Celtics get the Celtics got five players that's what it says it literally says five players these guys were salary match basically the Celtics didn't want these players but they got them what they really wanted was three first round picks and a pick swap that's what they actually got the other guys were just there to kind of like fill the roster and make the salaries match you have to match the salaries that's important so the 2016 pick was Jalen Brown, the 2017 pick was Jason Tatum. So it kind of worked out for the Celtics. The Nets, they found some success in other ways, but now they're kind of not looking so hot, but that has nothing to do with this trade. So I'm going to say the Celtics won this trade, and uh, I think that's it. I think that covers everything. I really appreciate people that come and watch these videos. Much love. Be good to your, be, be good to your moms. Eat hot dogs, corn dogs. Um, it's summer, baby.